Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another solo rambling rant uh, from Dangerous Ideas here on the Roulette Productions YouTube channel which of course is part of the Roulette Productions website where we have written articles from various people but let's go ahead and jump right into it because I'm really hoping to start my series of less than 30 minute long videos folks because yeah unfortunately I really try not to uh, epically take up all day on subjects but when we get into the more uh, fact-based educational stuff time does slip by you especially when you're dealing with subjects like the King Kong stuff which goes back almost a hundred years I mean, several decades of off and on litigation does take a bit of time to discuss. So, I'm going to try to stick to some shorter, fan-loving, opinion-based subjects for these next few videos. So, we can get in, you can watch them, enjoy, you can get out, and hopefully have time to think about what we talk about. Maybe even check out some of the stuff we talk about if you're not already super familiar with it. So, on that, I'm going to like start with something that I know a lot of people are not super familiar with because, well, simply put, you didn't hear a lot of gaming websites declaring them Game of the Year award winners or best-selling Game of the Year. And that is, because I know I've talked about it on Twitter, including probably annoying... Um, our friend of roulette production, Rabbit Sensei Gaming, with my almost constant references to uh, PXZ games. Anytime the Deer Rabbit brings up anything resembling video games. But this is what happens when I'm replaying a game that I really like. It tends to be the only thing stuck in my brain for a while. So I'm going to go ahead get these little quickie reviews out and hopefully move on with my life <laughs> maybe even get to playing some of those games I haven't played for one time yet that have been patiently waiting in a nice little stack for the past couple of years now well that's what happens when games go on sale and you have a day job so Let's get right down into it. No more intro nonsense. Project Cross Zone, as I have been told by the internet is a proper way to refer to these games. Project Cross Zone 1 and 2. We're going to cover them both real quick. First, this is for, I've got to discuss this. We're going to get it out of the way. These games are actually the second and third in their franchise because the first game was called Namco Cross Capcom, as those were the only two companies uh, contributing characters from their various uh, gaming series, as says. Series, as, 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 franchises, whatever. So, the fun of all this is that, obviously, the re one of the reasons they switched to calling it Project Cross Zone is that um, more companies like Sega got involved into it, and eventually Nintendo. So, it was easier just constantly adding company names to it. But, as I said, Namco Cross Capcom was the first game, and alas, it was a Japanese-only game. It was never brought to America. Which means that I have not played it because since I do not speak Japanese and have had problems in the past with fan translated games um, being translation patched and put up on the internet as free ROMs and I'm not getting into the ROM legality thing right now that is definitely going to be another episode I have mixed feelings about uh, piracy across all forms of media. Again, 
that's definitely going to be another episode. But gist of it is because I don't speak speak or read Japanese and I have had bad experiences with fan translation patches. I have not played Namco Cross Capcom yet. And as such, there are certain references in the two Project Cross Zone games, especially that second one, as its storyline is more of a direct sequel to Namco Capcom, that you're not going to fully get. It is going to make you feel like you missed a game. Because technically you have. I can tell you there are some wonderful fan sites out there that can give you a basic summary of the story of Namco Capcom. If you would like to do a little um, research, until then do what I do and poke Nintendo of America's Twitter and bug them over and over again about doing a port of Namco across Capcom. Preferably for the 3DS slash 2DS since that's where Project Cross I think I just said X Capcom which is incorrect but that's how it's written so that's how my silly western brain likes to say it but the two Project Zone games were for the, that wonderful portable system the 3DS 2DS probably should have brought mine in as a prop but oh well as I said is what you get for unrehearsed and with that in mind it would make sense to bring the first one in that series to that system so you can play them all on one system as I even have said before online make it less confusing for folks that aren't watching videos like this call it Project Cross Zone Zero. So folks figure out not only is it part of the same series, but it chronologically occurs before the first, let alone the second one. So that is a flaw because this being these being RPG games, the story is very important, especially for the original characters that do drive that story forward and whose character development, well, it really is the only development going on because when you got borrowed characters, you really don't want to introduce um, a lot of new story to them because that story is not going to get reflected in the main series games. And a lot of these characters, for instance, the ones from Street Fighter and Tekken, continue to have new games put out. Um, so I can so. That's one of the reasons I have the original characters, is so you have somebody who can have character development from game to game to game. One of the other flaws with it, and it's really a flaw to the tactical series in general, at least from the couple of them that I have played extensively, there's a few that I tried the first couple levels of and it just didn't click with me, is that every stage the battles get longer. Your first few tutorials, yeah, big deal like any other game, especially with the tutorial levels. You knock it out in a couple minutes, you're fine. <sighs> By the time you get to the end of Project Cross Zone 2, which I just finished last night, you are looking at... And again, maybe it's that I'm not an elite gamer here, I'm not MLG, I'm not pro eSport level, <laughs> by far, in anything... Um, let alone this genre, which as I said, I'm not super experienced in. Um, what I was saying is, perhaps it's my flaw, because I'm not super tight speedrun gamer. But, that's part of why I'm appealing to people about this as a con. Because your average schlub picking the game up is probably not going to be eSport big money level. So, those levels do take like a couple hours each to beat. I think that last fight took me um, about two and a half hours to finish. And that was with me having played the game through once, knowing the basic controls, uh, knowing a couple tips and tricks, 
and thus being able to uh, hoard some items that gave me a little bit of an advantage. So, yes, folks, these are definitely games that, you know, you have got to sit there and not expect to, you know, knock a level out on your break at work or in between classes once you get through the first dozen or so levels. Fortunately, there is a quick save feature in both games that allows you to save it in the middle of a level if you do start it and run out of time. Or alternatively, as I usually used it, to uh, make a quick save on the later levels where there is some tricky objectives that you can fail without all your characters getting killed. So, other than that, the only really big con that is not totally an opinion on my part that is a limit to the genre itself, but more to the individual games, is that, and actually this may be limited to the genre, but in general, while the battle scenes are fully animated, which kind of had to be for them to work in this feature of, you know, timing your chains of attacks together to continuously batter the opponent, causing more damage to them, which is a wonderful feature, but the story stuff before the fight begins itself is not animated. It's done with still pictures and dialogue boxes, which as an old school gamer, I in and of itself have no problem with, but especially when you've got characters who are supposed to be having a distinct emotional reaction, having their still picture avatar quickly shift to another version of their still picture avatar that's just drawn with a different facial reaction it just doesn't convey that emotion of the scene nearly as much as a full animated cutscene would have done. So, now, for highly imaginative people like myself, I quickly adapted. But I will admit, here and there, when I was playing the game, and trying to analyze it because I knew I was going to want to talk about it and I was really wanting to get an opinion that wasn't just blind fanboy gushing over that that is one I mean that is something that I feel for the average gamer who may not be used to this as a feature in games could be a bit of a drag on staying sucked into the storyline. Now here's the flip side of it. The fact that that is just about the only thing I can complain about when it comes to the games is a, a huge endorsement of the games. The gameplay is very easy. They're great introductions to the genre, especially with the tutorial levels. And the fact that you can go through and recheck the stuff they teach you in the tutorials later on. If you feel like, oh wait, what was that thing they showed me about a few levels back? I can't quite remember how they said to do it. In between battles, you can pull up your little uh, reference manual that's built within the game menu. And check it and be like, oh that's right, that's how I'm supposed to do that. That would help tremendously in this particular level. There is some paid DLC for the game. Fortunately, it is a relatively minor DLC in that it is a boost of items and boost to your stats, which basically gives you a leg up in the early levels of the game. It is not extra characters, extra levels. 
the equipable items they give you are not super game breaking. The game does still have difficulties. It is basically just a way for you to get a jump start on the game and make it a little bit easier. Um, your characters can still die in the game even if you equip these special items and fully use the stat boost uh, points they give you. So if you want them Feel free to get them. It's not a lot of money because I don't believe in paying big bucks for DLC. Um, sorry, but if you start paying $30, $40 for DLC, I'm looking at you and going, uh, that's almost the price of a full game. Why didn't you just, you know, make another game? If you're paying this much for all these extra characters and levels, just make a second game. But again, that's more of a DLC rant. I did just want to mention it because, as I said, I've always kind of held strong opinions on DLC and how the game industry uses it. I'm saying that's kind of a neutral point for the Project Zone games. But the music's fantastic. It samples a lot of music from the individual game series that these characters are coming from, which helps give them a lot of this appeal as a crossover game. And as I've said in my written article I recently posted, the dialogue is incredible. There's a lot of humor that does not detract from the game but adds to it. Because it's humor based on having these disparate characters from different games and different genres and different time periods interacting. Of course there's going to be a little bit of, really dude, your world's kind of strange, man. That's, well that's a little creepy. Because that's how human beings react to each other. Or humanoids, since not everything in the game is technically human because they're video games. You know, I will admit, again, depending on how you feel about games, uh, I'm gonna throw this out here. Well, again, while I didn't mind it, I will say the fact that, yes, all the written dialogue is in English, however, the spoken dialogue is in Japanese. So, for people who don't really like hearing foreign languages that they may not understand and potentially even uh, find it confusing to hear a language but read another language at the same time. Other than that, these are great games. Um, these little flaws are, in my opinion, definitely not game breakers. Check them out. Look up some Let's Play videos online. See about buying the games. If you fall in love with them, that's it for now. Please watch our next videos.